In this episode, I will demonstrate how to wrap text around a three-dimensional globe in Inkscape version 046. In order for me to achieve what I intend to in this screencast, I will use a fairly new extension for Inkscape called Bezier Envelope, written by a fellow on the Inkscape Devel mailing list known as Geek, also known as Garrett Carius. I think I pronounced his last name right. If I haven't, I'm so sorry. Anyway, I have longed for a fairly decent envelope effect in Inkscape, so I truly uh, appreciate this extension. There is a new live path effect coming in uh, release 047 called Envelope Deformation that works somewhat similarly to, uh, to the Bezier envelope, so keep an eye on out for that. In the meantime, you might find the Bezier uh, envelope awfully handy for things, so uh, thanks Garrett for writing it. All right, let's get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle, and I'm going to make this thing. Uh, we'll make it. Let's make this thing uh, 500 pixels. Okay, it's a perfect circle, and let's turn off our fill. And let's see. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, and center that on my page. So we'll go to our line and distribute and get that centered on our page here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag down some guides for now. And I'll double click on that guide. Uh, I'll change the Y to my document is set up uh, 800 by 600. So I'll make my Y 300. And I'll make my X 400. That gets me in the middle of the page. All right, that gets us that far. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is draw an ellipse. And I'll make this ellipse 500 wide. Make sure I uncheck my lock here. And I'll go, uh, let's try 75. See what that looks like. That might be a little high. Let's try 50. And I'm going to center that up on my document. OK. I'll right click on that and duplicate. I'll slide one up. And I'll right click, duplicate again, and we'll slide it down. OK, I'm going to pick this. We'll pick this object. We'll go to our line and distribute. And I believe it is, I need to go last selected, and I think it's this one. Okay. I'll select this object, this object next, and I'll do this button here. And that puts these things on top of each other. Okay. Now, I no longer need this, uh, this center ellipse, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I just want to note, too, while I'm at it, uh, the idea for this screencast came from one of our viewers uh, who wanted to learn how to do this. And um, I kind of got the idea for this uh, ellipse here um, from uh, Richard. Uh, Richard helped him first, and he had a, had a good idea of drawing these uh, reference uh, ellipses around the globe. And there's several ways of, of doing this in Inkscape. And uh, in the end, I thought this was probably the best way after all. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Richard's idea here. So thanks, Richard, for that. But uh, anyways, let's carry on. Um, I've got this here. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is zoom in on this. And again, these ellipses here are just for reference. So what I'm going to do now is uh, draw a Bezier path. And I'm just going to snap it on here, right about here. Now, it's important to note that in order to get the Bezier envelope tool to work, um, you need to start from the upper left-hand corner and draw your, uh, draw your path around uh, in a clockwise uh, fashion. And you want to make sure that you're drawing, uh, I think it takes just four segments to draw it, OK? So I'm going to start here. I'm going to hold my Control key down. We'll go to the other side. Now just kind of eye it to snap it on here. I'm not really snapping. And I'll go down here. Go about right here. And then we'll close the path. 
okay now I'm gonna zoom in on this and you can see that I'm not quite straight so what I'm gonna do is select this node and just kinda just kinda straighten it up a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect we'll go to the other side and make sure that it's okay too and I can select both nodes and just pull it in a little bit okay and that's probably good enough again we don't have to be perfect if you wanna uh, make yours perfect you'll have all the time in the world but I'm gonna go kinda quickly on the screencast okay so I've got this uh, Bezier path uh, rectangle drawn around here and what I'm gonna do next is zoom in on these sides I'm gonna select this path and I'm gonna pull this and curve it over just a little bit just so I kinda match this here now there's another way of doing it and I can do an undo here and eventually I wanna make this circle smaller so what I can do is duplicate that circle hold my control shift down and drag this in about right there and that'll work too as a guide so now I can take this again and just kinda get this close okay I'll go ahead and get rid of this circle we'll go ahead and go to this side I'll do the same thing again I'm just going to my node tool selecting this segment with my left mouse button and dragging it just a little bit okay and what I'm trying to do is just kinda of match the curvature of this outside surface again it doesn't have to be perfect it's okay we just want to get it close nobody's gonna tell in the end okay I'm gonna zoom in on this I'll select this path again and we're gonna get close to the center here and we're gonna pull it down and we're gonna try to match this right here okay I'm gonna grab this one bend it downward and try to match that up okay close enough is good enough okay now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold my shift key down move these up one step and it's a little big so we'll arrow down one two three one two three okay alright now let's zoom out on this and what I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna make some text real quick before I get into the Bezier envelope and uh, let's just put some uh, text on here we'll say uh, daily times Be kind of a news globe and actually I want to make that bold and I'm just using the bitstream Vera Sans the default font that'll be just fine for this and if you want you can make this just a little bit bigger okay I'll take that and I'm going to make that uh, object path okay now in order to get the Bezier envelope to work which is found in effects modify path Bezier envelope you need to stick that in your user share Inkscape extensions directory or in other words stick it in the directory where all the rest of your extensions are located once you do that you need to restart Inkscape obviously and then the option will be listed okay so in order to get this thing to work we're gonna select our text our path we're gonna go to effects modify path Bezier envelope okay and you see that it pretty much takes my text and fills in this uh, path that I've drawn now it's not perfect uh, Garrett even admits that it's kind of a work in progress or whatever but it's good enough for what we want to do okay and it works actually it works a lot better than the envelope effect that's found uh, in, the, in the same directory right here uh, the envelope effect works almost identically to the perspective effect 
Um, I think it just uh, it's just a, another way of implementing perspective, and it's just not it's just not ideal to use. I, I really don't I don't find a use for it. In most cases, uh, perspective works, uh, but having this Bezier envelope uh, extension really does help out, and uh, especially if you've longed for an envelope effect. So it really does a, a decent job. And then what it doesn't do, you know, you can just tweak. So. All right, so let's zoom out and uh, let's get rid of this shape back here because we don't need it anymore. And uh, let's pull back in. And you'll notice too that if your text seems to lean one way or the other, it's because your uh, before you used your Bezier uh, effect or envelope effect, your path was pulled one way or the other. So if you straighten out your nodes and you get things lined up and centered, really this effect works just perfectly. I'm going kind of quick, so things aren't going to look, you know, exactly perfect, but they should be good enough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guides. We do that by uh, holding our control key down, left mouse, uh, clicking on them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this text, and I'm using the uh, Tango palette. I'll go ahead and give it a light uh, tangle black. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that. We're going to change its color so we can see it. And holding the uh, control shift key down, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And also, I'm just going to drag it down just a little bit so I can expose that top. And uh, what I'm about to do is uh, use the interpolation uh, effect to extrude this back to show some uh, depth in here. Before I do that, I'm going to take this red text and uh, turn it black again. We'll zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to select, I'll window around both objects. We'll go to Effects, Generate from Path, Interpolate. And I'm going to go about 25 steps and I'll hit apply. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is ungroup all this and I'm going to take this one here and duplicate it and I'm going to move it down. I'm holding my shift key down and moving it down a couple steps and I'm going to join actually I'm going to union everything back here okay so we're gonna go to uh, uh, path union okay that cleans it up pretty uh, pretty well and I'm gonna take this text here and we'll just make it a light shade and I'll move it back up so it's shift up arrow until it's back up in place and we have a nice extruded text and basically this is the brunt of the screencast oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the part that we do to make that text look like it's going around this globe. Okay, so really it was just that part there. So, you know, as I carry on, I'm just adding uh, some extra effects to it. So that's how you wrap text around a globe. Um, all right, so let's carry on. I'm going to take this uh, uh, gray uh, text shape. I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate that. And I'm going to give it a white stroke. I'm going to remove the fill. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go to Path, Dynamic Offset. And I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll zoom out. Okay, and that's pretty much my text there. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on, and I'm going to make, uh, with these uh, ellipses that I have on here, I'm going to go ahead and make like a banner or uh, an underlying uh, surface around here, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my Bezier tool. I'm going to get this as close as I can. I'll hit Enter. And we're going to go to our node tool and we're going to pull this out and I'm going to kind of want to match my uh, my circle. 
So I'm using my circle here as a reference. So I want to kind of make that on the same, uh, same shape. And we'll go down here. And what I need to do is turn my caps on. So I have rounded caps. And I'll zoom in on this. We'll go to our node tool. And we'll just kind of get this close. Again, I'm just going to go quickly here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Plus, we're going to be zoomed out. So, okay, make sure that your strokes. I want to go one there. Make sure that your strokes are the same size. I didn't quite have that the same size. So, uh, all right. And we're going to do a zoom previous. We'll go back out here. Select this. And we'll kind of clean that up. Try to get those uh, lines to match up there. And we'll do a zoom previous. Okay, and I'm going to take this, right click on it, duplicate. I am going to rotate that, mirror it, move it over to the other side. And we'll zoom in on this. I'll just hold my control key down and again I'm just looking to get it close and we'll do zoom previous to get us back out and now what I want to do is I'm gonna take these ellipse I'm gonna do object to path on both of them okay I'm gonna click on that and uh, when I do that I have uh, I have four nodes on an ellipse or a circle when you make it a path uh, what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do actually let me just zoom out you right click on this duplicate and I'm gonna bring my circle back in here Oh, right there okay all right let's get back onto this thing again and what I'm gonna do is uh, I am going to add a node right here okay and I'm gonna break that with our break path zoom back out again I'm gonna go to the other side select this ellipse, select our node tool, add a node right where that intersection is, and I'm going to highlight that and break that. Okay, now we're going to zoom back out, we'll click on our node tool, I'm going to select this node here, and I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to come over here and hit delete. Okay, now what that does is uh, basically trims off the back there, so I've got a nice uh, wrap around here. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is uh, probably could get rid of this outside circle. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that right now so we can kind of see what we're doing. Okay, and I'm going to go down to the bottom. And let's see here. What I need to do is bring this forward. I'm going to bring it up to the top here. Okay. And I'm going to click this bottom ellipse, and we're going to put, again, we're going to put, ooh, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to put the intersection about right here. Okay, and I'm going to take that. I'm going to highlight that, if you can see it, and I'm going to break it. Okay, we'll go out. I know this kind of gets a little hairy here, but uh, just stay with me. Okay. I want to go ahead and lower that again. I'm going to select this ellipse node tool and I'll put a node just under it. I'll select that and we'll break it. Okay. Now I'm going to select this node. I'm going to delete it. Come over here. 
make sure I got it. There we go. And basically what I've done is kind of just trim that up a little bit. And again, you know, you want to spend some time here. And uh, let me take this and just uh, go to our stroke. Cap it off there. But you want to spend some time and kind of clean up that corner and get it nice and, excuse me, nice and rounded. We'll lower this. And let me just take another another quick look. Eh, that's good enough. Okay, so basically what I've drawn here, it's uh, it's pretty much in an isometric at this point. It's not filled in. Uh, but basically what I've drawn is a banner around here. And that's, I just kind of want to simulate something that's being wrapped around the globe. Okay? So what I'm going to do next is, uh, now that I have this, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I'm going to go to my layer, scoot this over a little bit, and I'm going to make one called Banner. We'll add that, and I'm going to move that down. Okay, now I'm going to select all these little objects here that are considered my banner. I'm going to hold my shift key and my page down to move the layer. Okay. Now I'm going to turn off everything on layer 1 and you can see that it just exposes my banner. Okay. Before I do that though, there's one thing that I've forgotten. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this thing. I am going to right click on this top object, duplicate it, I'm going to hold my control shift key down and bring that in just a little bit. Oh, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to skew it upward. Okay, and that's going to create my my thickness, my extrusion for this top around here. And might as well clean that up while I'm at it. Okay, so I'm going to take these objects and We'll give them rounded caps. And I'm going to bring this in here just a little bit. Oh, just like that. And we'll do a zoom preview. So we'll get to this other side. Okay, and we'll pull this down just a little bit. Okay, and that gives me that little section, okay? All right, and now what I'm going to do is go back to my layers. And we'll go ahead and turn off our layer one so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so we can just work with the banner. And what I'm going to do is use my bucket fill, and I'm going to make sure my threshold is zero, and my grow, we'll make it like a one. And let's see what color I am here. We'll do an undo. I want to make sure that I am on a black color. Matter of fact, let's go orange. Okay, and in order to see if you've got it right here, I'm going to zoom in on this. And I, I don't, so I'm going to undo this. You want to make sure that your stroke is turned off when you're drawing a new object. We'll go back to our full view here. We'll go to our bucket fill. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. It might be a little too thick there, but we're going to go ahead and fix the areas. Make sure everything is a one. For 
for the stroke. Okay, and it is. Actually, I think what I would like to do, let's do this. Let's let's get rid of that. And let's add this here. This. Now let's do this, this, this. And we'll go to object, go to path, and we'll do a combine. Okay, there we go. And I'll make sure everything is one. There we go. Sorry, folks. I'm kind of thinking on my feet here. All right. Now, let's go back to our bucket fill. We'll fill that in. Should be good enough. And I'm going to go ahead and lower that a step so that our stroke is uh, clearly visible on the outside. All right. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this here and in order to do that I probably need to adjust this let's go with a uh, point one and we'll fill that top in and that's not quite gonna do it let's go a point two zoom in on that that's not gonna quite do it And we'll go back to our bucket fill. A little trial and error here. We'll go 0.5, enter. Okay, let's take a look at that. Nah. Try it again. We'll do a 0.8. All right, we'll call that good enough. Okay, and then while we're zoomed in on this, we're, we can go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Well, I'm going to select my orange here. I'll take that node and just kind of pull it up. I'll select this fill that I just made. And uh, we'll just kind of pull that in there. I want to take this, move it way out here. I'm just dragging these edges. And if it's hard to see, we can go ahead and turn that a different color. Basically, I'm just kind of quickly uh, trying to fill in the, the inside here. Let's go to the other side, and I'm going to click this orange. We'll grab that. I'll click the red. We'll pull our red all the way out. Something about like this. And you can always add more nodes as you're doing this too. Okay, and basically I'm just trying to fill up the white areas here. And we'll go ahead and lower that. Okay, and that is a nice fill in. And let's zoom out. We do that by, we can roll on this number here. I'm just checking my corners. Okay, I think that all looks pretty good. I'm zoom back up. And we'll make this back to our tangle black. Okay, that is our banner. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a little lighter. Okay, so we can see what we're doing here. Now, what I want to do is I am going to take this gray here, and we're going to give it a gradient, a uh, radial gradient, and we want to make sure that our uh, fill is selected. I'll double click on this. We'll do a Shift R to reverse that gradient. Uh, I'm going to double click in here to add uh, a node and our, I'm going to select my first node inside and make it white. Second one will make a little lighter and the last one will make dark.
drag this a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is modify our gradient. Now, I want to get this right here. Makes it just a little darker. Okay, I think that probably looks pretty good. You can mess around with gradients like, you know, for quite a while. I, I notice that I do that too. Uh, I'll fool around with gradients for like an hour just tweaking things. I'm just going to kind of move along though on this. <clears throat> we'll go back to our layer and let's turn on everything, see where we are. All right, we're getting closer. And what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to give our text a little gradient. So I'm going to. Uh, select our text. You want to make sure that you've got the gray one, not the white one. And I'll select my gradient tool. I'll just double click in here. I am going to do a Shift R. And I'm going to slide that up. We'll add another stop. Whoops. Where'd you go? I love it when it does that. Okay, let's select our text again. All right. And it's going to be finicky. Not to worry. We'll get it in the end here. Okay, I'm going to select our gray text. Make sure you get the text, not the fill. Remove the fill here. I want to get the text behind it. All right, let's get rid of this thing. Move it down, get my text. Okay, now it's still going to. All right. That's the way you want to be. We'll uh we'll do it a different way. We're going to go into our fill. Uh we'll select our radial gradient. We'll go edit. Okay, let me just move some stuff out of the way. I want to go dark here, light here, and I'm going to add a stop. Okay, now we can select our, our gradient tool. We'll put it about right here. I'll move this out just a little bit. And I want that inside to be white, the middle to be kind of a lighter gray, and the end to be a dark. We can slide this out just a little bit so it isn't quite so harsh. Okay. So, sorry it took me a while there. Sometimes things don't work out well when you're screencasting. Okay, let me get back to that again. I'm going to adjust that gradient just a tad. There we go. I don't want it quite so bright. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Uh, the next thing that we need to do, um, I do not have a fill on the inside here. So uh, what I'm going to do is zoom in on this area, and I need to fill this area in. So I'm going to grab my bucket tool. Um, we'll do a, uh, let's try a point eight just to see where we are. We'll fill that in. Uh, that looks pretty good. And I want to be make I want to make sure that I'm on the banner layer and I'm not I'm on layer one. So I'm going to open up my layers dialog, move this up so you guys can see what I'm doing down here with my key status monitor, and I'm going to hold my shift key page down 
to move this object to my banner layer. Okay, so you can see that I have that thing uh, turned on there. Uh, I'm going to take this and we're going to lower it a step. That'll get that fill in there. Doesn't have to be quite so dark. Okay, that'll fill that in, and we'll do the same on the other side here. I want to make sure that I'm on the banner layer. I'll go ahead and set that now. Fill that up. And we'll lower it a step to get it behind. Okay, and I filled that up. Looks pretty good. I'm going to take this here, and we're going to give that a linear gradient. I'll do it the old-fashioned way by going into my fill linear gradient. zoom out a couple times here. Okay, I'm going to make this here a little lighter. A little too light. Make this back here dark. Alright, I think that looks probably pretty good. <clears throat> okay, now for our globe. We're going to go to layers. We're going to add a final layer. I'll call it globe. And I'm going to spell it right. It's probably a good idea. And we're going to move it down. So it doesn't matter if you uh, put a layer, if you add a layer in Inkscape, uh, it's not quite where you want it. Don't worry, you can move it up or down here. So we're going to move it all the way down to the bottom so it's below everything. And I'm going to highlight this our globe and you can see that I'm on layer one so again I'm gonna hold my shift key down page down to move that object to the globe layer okay and whoops I hit the right close button here and you can see now that the globe is behind everything okay so I'm gonna go ahead and take this well let's zoom out a little bit so we can see we'll fix our uh, gradients a little later here Okay, so let me think about what I want to do here. Um, I think what I want to do before I color this, I am going to highlight this. I'm going to go to Effects, Render, Grid. And I'm going to make this about a, uh, let's see what a 25 does. And what that'll do, <coughs> excuse me, that will uh, render a grid here. And I'm going to push that behind everything else. Okay. So I'm going to select my, uh, actually, I got to make sure my circle, let's move this. I got to make sure my circle is a path uh, before I do that. Sure, I got a one here. Okay, now it's a path. So you can see in the background here that it's telling me or on my status bar, it's telling me that I have a path there. Okay, so we'll we'll put this back on our page. I'm gonna select my grid. I'm gonna select my circle. Um, if you don't see your selection, again, just look at your status bar. It tells you you've got two objects selected. And again, I'm going to go to Effects, Modify Path, Bezier Envelope. Okay, I'm going to take this and holding my Control key down, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And let's make sure we center that up on our page. I'll show you what I'm going to do with this in just a second. Okay, now I'm going to take this path here. We're going to give it a color. Uh, I'll make it a little lighter so we can see. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to highlight that. We're going to give ourselves a radial gradient. So I'll just double click it. I'll do a Shift R to uh, reverse that gradient. Um, We'll move this out here. I'm going to try this again. It just doesn't want to add a stop. 
Probably if I restart Inkscape and start it again, the, it'll come back. We'll add a stop here. Okay. Actually, I want to make sure that I've got a gradient here. I'm going to turn off my stroke. Radial gradient. We'll do an edit. Okay. Make sure the inside is a... Let's try a little bit of a white. And the outside will go black. And I'm going to add a stop. No, that was the wrong one. So let's go the opposite way. There we go. And I can do the rest on canvas here. So I'll go ahead and select that. My inside I want white. Outside I want uh, medium gray. And the very edge out here. I get this color. I'll kind of move this a little bit like that. And I'm going to make that a, a little brighter. Go to our edit here, actually. Okay, and again, you know, you can fool around with gradients a long time, just just getting things tweaked uh, just fine. Uh, I'm just going to take this and and call it good enough. Uh, but I'm gonna I want to take that globe, and uh, I want to get the piece behind it. And I'll hold down my uh, Super Alt key, and uh, bring that forward. And I'm gonna make that about a two five. Uh, and I want to give that a uh, radial gradient. So I'm going to go to uh, my fill and stroke dialog, my stroke paint, we'll give it a gradient. And it's on a 45 degree angle uh, when you apply that effect, the Bezier envelope effect. Um, to get it straight again, um, you can hold your control key down. Uh, if you're if you're on you know 15 degree increments I'm on 10 right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and fudge that and kinda get it close I think that's pretty good that's kinda what I was shooting for and uh, in the end here what I'm gonna do is highlight this whole thing hold my control key down and just rotate it 10 degrees okay now this is kinda the what I was going for I was going for uh, kind of a comic booky type, you know, daily planet Superman type thing. Um, I like uh, drawing in uh, black and white sometimes. I think it looks pretty good. Um, but if it's a little too dark for you, it's not quite what you want. Um, again, you can add your, uh, you can adjust your radial gradients. Um, if you want just kind of uh, um, an accent color. Uh, you could go with an orange right here, actually, and apply that uh, gradient. Uh, we'll do a Shift R, and I'll kind of show you how that looks here. So we'll go ahead and select that. We'll go to our uh, Fill and Stroke dialog. Uh, we'll do an Edit, and I want a kind of a we'll do a, a little lighter in there. Do kind of a burnt edge. And if you want, you can add a stop. Get the one in the middle. Make it just a little bit lighter. And you can adjust that. Zoom in on this a little bit, and ideally you're supposed to have you know a little bit of a of a lighter color here on your uh, extrude. So uh, what you can do there 
is add a linear gradient. But you want to make sure you get the right one. Well, I tell you, gradients just aren't working for me right at the moment. Never really had this kind of trouble before. And we'll go linear here. We do an edit. I'll just move this around a little too bright. Okay, I kind of lighten it up a little bit on that edge. You know, my light source is kind of coming around here, so it's not really it's not really accurate as far as lighting goes, um, but it's okay. You know, close enough. Um, Again, like I have said over and over again, you can go back in there and kind of adjust your gradients. You can spend all kinds of time just, just fooling around with your gradients, getting it getting it right. But uh, basically what I wanted to show, let me zoom in on this so we can see it, was text going around a, a 3D globe. Um, <clears throat> Hopefully I've kind of illustrated that. Um, I thought it would be best to uh, kind of throw this banner on there. Uh, maybe you don't want a banner on there. Maybe you just want your text uh, to, to, to go around this globe. That's fine. Do whatever you want. It's your artwork. Um, but I thought I would add that just as a touch. So you guys could see you know, how, how someone would draw a uh, th kind of like a three-dimensional banner that way. Um, it does help too sometimes as far as your lighting goes. I've Lately I've been using uh, Blender. I'll go into Blender and I'll kind of model these things up. Uh, there's lots of tutorials online that will help you get started. Uh, but as far as your light sources go, <clears throat> it only takes maybe 10-15 minutes of modeling something real quick. Uh, and rendering it to see how something gets shaded, uh, to see how, how shadows fall. Um, I could go on and carry on and actually add some shadows here, which would look a little nicer. Um, but, you know, you guys can, can kind of add that on your own. So basically, I just wanted to show you how to uh, apply like a three-dimensional text around a globe. I think I've done that. So uh, hopefully you find this screencast useful. Uh, again, Garrett, uh, big, big thanks for the uh, Bezier envelope effect. Um, that is, it's very nice. I've been using it since, since he posted it up on the, uh, uh, the mailing list. I've been using it all the time. Yeah, I, I find it handy. It's just one of those tools that, that I use often, and I've been wanting for a really long time. So uh, it does come in handy. And <clears throat> by the way, I use uh, version 0, uh, 047 often. Uh, that's still an SVN. It's slated to be released uh, in the next few months. But the Bezier envelope tool does work well in 047 so far, uh, unless something changes. Uh, so you guys can rely on that. So excellent. So thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.